Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. And welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this Soundbites module, we'll continue our journey looking at the Trauma Fast Exam. I hope you've had a chance to join me prior for modules looking at the right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant views of the Trauma Fast Exam. In this module, we'll specifically look at the suprapubic view, also known as the bladder or pelvic view of the Trauma Fast Exam. There's a lot of information we can gain from looking at the suprapubic view, as we can potentially detect a smaller amount of fluid than is required to make a positive right upper quadrant or left upper quadrant view. The literature suggests that only about 100 to 200 cc's of fluid can be detected accurately on the suprapubic view. Here's a slide reviewing how to perform the suprapubic view of the trauma fast exam. In contrast to the upper quadrant views where we looked only in a long axis configuration, the suprapubic view is made up of two planes. We want to look in both long and short axis configurations. We'll begin in long axis with the marker dot oriented towards the patient's head and complete our exam by moving the probe into short axis with the marker dot towards the patient's right side. This way we can fully scan through the pelvis and not miss any small amounts of fluid there. It's optimal to perform the examination with a full bladder as an optimal acoustic window, so perform the exam prior to having the patient void or placing a Foley catheter. Here's an illustration showing the anatomy that we'll need to know to perform the suprapubic view of the trauma fast exam. We see the pattern of fluid flow in a female to the left here and a male to the right. Let's look closer at the female pelvis to the left, and what we see is that fluid will preferentially develop in the pelvic cul-de-sac located behind the uterus. Now, small amounts of fluid will only be located in the pelvic cul-de-sac, but as the amount of fluid enlarges, it will come out and increase so that it will layer out on top of the uterus and on top of the dome of the bladder. But small amounts of fluid will only be found in that pelvic cul-de-sac posterior to the uterus. Now let's take a look at the male pelvis to the right, and we see small amounts of fluid that will only be found in the retrovesical space behind the bladder. As the amount of fluid enlarges, it will come anterior to settle out over the top of the dome of the bladder, but as we emphasized in the female, small amounts of fluid will only be found in one place, and in the male, it will be in that retrovesical space immediately posterior to the bladder. Let's begin by looking at some normal video from the suprapubic view, in this case, a long axis view in a female, superior to the left, inferior to the right. The first structure we identify is the bladder, the dark area, anteriorly, and posterior to the bladder we see the uterus. Now if we look into the potential space, the pelvic cul-de-sac posterior to the uterus for any dark fluid collections, we see an absence of any fluid on this normal video clip. Now let's inspect a video clip from a male, in this case a short axis view. We see a large bladder there, anteriorly, and behind the bladder we see two tubular structures making up the seminal vesicles, a normal finding in a male. Now, if we were looking for free fluid behind the bladder, we'd be looking for a dark or anechoic fluid collection layering out behind the bladder. Notice this is a normal examination. Here's a positive examination in a female trauma patient. We're looking in the long axis view, superior to the left, inferior to the right. The first structure we identify is the bladder as seen inferior here, and notice the uterus, the solid organ, as seen superior to the bladder. We note the parts of the uterus, the fundus anteriorly, and the cervix more posteriorly. Now let's look into the pelvic cul-de-sac immediately posterior to the uterus, and what we see here is the presence of a dark or anechoic fluid collection just posterior to the cervix within the pelvic cul-de-sac. So in the female trauma patient, this does denote a positive examination and can be a sign of ongoing bleeding within the abdominal pelvic cavity. So let's contrast this clip in which we see a small amount of fresh fluid within the pelvic cul-de-sac with this one in which we have a female trauma patient with a large amount of bleeding within the pelvic cavity. We see here, again, a long axis scan, superior to the left, inferior to the right. The bladder we see as the dark structure inferiorly and the uterus superior to the bladder. Notice the fresh fluid as seen posterior to the uterus within the cul-de-sac, but note that the amount of fluid comes anterior to the uterus as seen here between the uterus and the bladder. So this denotes a large amount of blood within the pelvic cavity in this female trauma patient. If we now orient the probe towards the patient's right side, we obtain a short axis view of the same patient. And what we see here is the uterus in the middle of the image, and notice the large amount of fresh fluid as seen both to the top or anterior to the uterus and posterior to the uterus. Notice in this case we can see the broad ligaments of the uterus well outlined by all the fresh fluid within the pelvis. So a large amount of fresh fluid or blood in this case within this female trauma patient. Here's a positive examination, suprapubic view, short axis in a male. 
Probe is oriented towards the patient's right, and anteriorly we see a large fluid-filled bladder. Posterior to the bladder in the retrovesical space, we appreciate the presence of free fluid, as shown by that darker anechoic fluid collection there. Now, this gives a finding known as the double wall sign, and we see the wall of the bladder outlined by the urine inside the bladder, and the blood in this case outside the bladder in the area of the retrovesical space. To further confirm that the last patient had a positive exam and that we're not mistaking the areas of fluid as seminal vesicles, we'll rescan the patient in the long axis plane, superior to the left, inferior to the right. We see the large circular bladder as seen anteriorly, and superior and posterior to the bladder in the retrovesical space, we can see free fluid layering out there. This confirms that indeed the patient has a positive exam with blood layering out behind the bladder, and again we see the double wall sign, urine outlining the inner wall of the bladder, and blood in this case outlining the outer wall of the bladder. Here we're scanning a male trauma patient with a long axis configuration, and we see a large amount of free fluid within the pelvis. We note the bladder inferiorly, and note all the free fluid layering out both posterior to the bladder in the retrovesical space and coming anteriorly onto the dome of the bladder as seen to the left here. So a large amount of free fluid in this male trauma patient. In conclusion, I'm glad I could share with you the SoundBytes module covering the suprapubic view of the trauma fast exam. This view is a very important one to add on to the exam of your trauma patient as we can potentially detect a smaller amount of fluid here within the pelvis than it takes to make a positive right upper quadrant or left upper quadrant view. Remember that this is a two-step exam. We'll be looking in both short and long axis configurations to verify fluid. And also remember the differences between the female, where we're looking into the pelvic cul-de-sac for fluid, and the male, where we're looking into the retrovesical space for fluid. So I hope to see you back in the future as SoundBytes continues.